it's Megan. Welcome back to another DIY on a budget video. This time, all the DIYs are $5 or less. This video is also super special because this video is in collaboration with Shannon from The Daily DIYer, who I absolutely adore. And forgive me, because I'm really sweaty and I have paint on my hands. Oh my gosh. Anyways, Shannon is amazing. She and her fiance recently just built, she calls it a she shed, but it's really a, like a tiny house from the ground up, like poured the concrete, laid the framing work, everything like that. But she also does simple like dollar DIYs. So definitely check her out. If you're coming from Shannon's channel, hey, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Megan, this is my channel, Glue Guns and Roses, where I'm all about decorating on a very small budget. With all that being said, we're gonna get right into the video. I think I mentioned $5 or less. Yeah, these DIYs are amazing. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. We're getting into it right now. This first DIY, we are making a huge ladder with no power tools for less than $4. All you need are three of these $1.18 wood strips from Home Depot. That's linked in the description. And these wood strips used to be 98 cents, but they raise the prices, so you know, it's a sad day, but at least it's only 18 cents. Still pretty cheap. Now I'm cutting my ladder down. I don't want it totally eight feet tall. So I just measured down 16 inches and then cut that off. And by the way, you don't need any power tools for this. All you need is a handsaw and it helps if you have a miter box like the one I'm using. Seriously, super simple. This is not like fast speed. This is real time, me just cutting this piece of wood. And you really just let the saw do the work for you. If you don't have a handsaw, I have a handsaw slash miter box combo also linked in the description for you. There you go, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Seriously, you just let the saw do it for you and you just glide it back and forth. Do that to both of the wood strips. Then the third wood strip, you're gonna cut into six pieces, 16 inches each. And by the way, it does make life a little bit easier, at least for me. If you do use a little clamp, you can see in the like left corner, that's just a little clamp. They're like less than $5 also from Home Depot. But as you can see, the first time I cut the wood, I didn't use any clamp at all. So this is what we have so far. We have two strips of wood and six pieces, or you can say like two strips of wood that are 80 inches long and then six strips of wood that are 16 inches each. And I just decided exactly how far I wanted the, I believe it's called rungs of my ladder. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Rungs of my ladder to be spaced. I decided on 10 inches and then I just whipped out the wood glue. It doesn't matter what type of wood glue, any kind of wood glue will work. Measure down and then made sure my angle was right by just using a little square, which by the way, you can pick up at Dollar Tree. Looks like a ruler, but it's called a square. And then just hammered in my nails. And I just continued working down. I mean, at first it was like kind of aggravating, but once I got the groove, Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, just kept on going. Nailing, measuring, gluing, all the way down. And by the way, the wood glue itself is actually like what's mainly holding this ladder together. So you could technically just use wood glue and not nail it together if you let the wood glue dry overnight. Then I don't have any stain on hand. So I just picked up a few brown paints, mixed them with regular water, and then just painted that all over the ladder. Now, the thing about doing this is there's no real science or measurement to it. Just kind of mix water and the paint until you get the right consistency. I like mine super watery. And then you should also know it does look a lot darker and when it dries, it looks totally different. So when this dried, it was too orangey for me. So I just went back with black, regular black acrylic paint and water all over my ladder and then I immediately went back and wiped it off to give it more like dimension. And then I just set that aside and let that dry overnight. And you can see this is a pretty big ladder, nice and sturdy too. And then I love the way this turned out. Really simple, really easy. Of course this would look cute like as a blanket ladder, but I'm actually using it outside because it also is very functional and makes great storage for garden supplies, or tools, or whatever you wanna hang on your ladder. I do need to seal mine because I'm keeping it outside, but 
it would not be necessary for you to seal yours if you were just keeping yours inside. For the next DIY, we are using only two of the same wood strips from Home Depot. Cut that down 16 inches, both strips, so you'll have a total of 12 pieces. Take just 10 of the pieces, ignore where I stain them, went a different direction with this DIY, and just took out a large square and then wood glue and glued them together. Let that dry overnight or 24 hours. That will make your board really sturdy, like no nails, no nothing is needed, along with the wood glue. It's a very strong bond. The next day I just came back and we had two pieces left over because remember we had 12 strips, we only used 10. And I just measured off the length of the little board. This is gonna be our tray. So the length of our tray and then just cut the little ends down. Did that to both pieces. Then all we have to do is just take some more wood glue and a few nails to attach our end strips to our tray. And actually you don't need any nails. I just wanted mine to be a little bit extra sturdy. So I did put four nails on each sides. But once again, you could just use wood glue or even super glue, maybe E6000. I'm not really sure. I don't use E6000 that often. So I'm not really sure it's bonds or what it works well with. And then now these strips that I happened to get were a little bit more rough. So I did go back and just sand my tray. That is one thing about these wood strips from Home Depot. They aren't always consistent in the quality. And these strips did happen to be a little rough. So sanding may be needed, but you can totally do that by hand. Then just snatch up your favorite paint. I always have Rust-Oleum's white chalk paint on hand because it's a really fair price for that little can. It's like they also raise the prices on this, darn inflation. It's like $17 now, it used to be 16, but it's still a great deal. And white, you can mix any color with it to kind of make the color you want. So that's why I always have white on hand. Then just any handles you wanna use, I'm just using Dollar Tree's rope. Tied them in a knot and cut them down to the same length. Hot glued on each end. I just use the little boards as like measurement and then kind of eyeball to make them even. And I also put little nails in the middle just to make it more sturdy. That way I can lift it up by the handles and it's not going anywhere. And that's it, that, all, that is all it takes to make this little $2 tray that is super cute. It is a decent size and it would make great for indoor or outdoor decor. It also reminds me of those little oven trays that I've seen people make on Pinterest. So you could maybe make one a little bit larger and make yourself an oven tray for maybe $3. But I love this tray and I also think it's functional, which is my favorite type of DIY. For this next DIY, I'm actually kind of redoing one of my very first DIYs I ever did on my channel, where I just took one of these, technically two, two of these little bottles from the Dollar Tree, removed the top part and the little plastic piece that comes with it, and then put the little metal pieces back together. Now, when I originally did this, we made salt and pepper shakers, and Dollar Tree wasn't carrying the sticker letters or I didn't know about them, so I had cut on an S and a P, used Mod Podge, and put it onto my glass containers. But now Dollar Tree does sell these sticker letters. So I removed the old paper pieces I cut out and put salt and pepper back into my little jars, put the stickers on there. And by the way, regular salt and pepper shaker lids fit on there perfectly and you can snap the little metal piece back together and it stays on, it doesn't go anywhere. You see what I'm saying? Look, pepper's coming out, everything's a-okay. Got a lot of questions about that. Yes, it stays on by itself, no glue is needed. And I'd use this inside, but I also think this would be really cute for like outdoor decor. You know, once quarantine is over, maybe we can have barbecues or we can just enjoy this cute outdoor decor with ourselves and our family or ourselves and our pet family, whoever you live with. This next DIY is actually, I think the most expensive DIY, but it is super cute. It's still like only $5. All you need is one of these smaller little wreath forms from Dollar Tree, and then two of Walmart's $2 eucalyptus. I've had this on hand. I love the way this stuff looks. I have a few bundles of it, and it's really fun to decorate with year round. And then just cut the stems off. Whenever I'm making a wreath, 
Usually I don't like to use hot glue, that way I can easily reuse the wreath form, but this one is like extra janky. Dollar Tree's wreath forms are always janky, this one is like janky deluxe. So I did kind of place where I wanted my stems to go and then I went back and hot glued. And unfortunately, I did have to use hot glue on the entire wreath. I guess not unfortunately, it's cute. It's just, I like to reuse wreath forms, take them apart. So I know it's only a dollar, but still like a dollar saved is a dollar earned. I believe the saying goes. And yeah, that's it. That's all you have to do for this wreath. And voila, here we go. And we actually made this wreath to go with our Final DIY, which is probably my favorite DIY, my most proud DIY. We are making another ladder, but we're doing it a little bit different and we are taking up the like professional high-end looking game. So we need three more of the Home Depot wood strips. Measured where I wanted my ladder to be and I just decided on 80 inches once again. 80 seems to be a good number. It's about the same as like a door, like as high as a door. And this time I'm using my miter saw. Now I know everyone might not have this. This is a very small, the cheapest one I could find. I got it when I installed our floorings and I just set that to five. So like five degrees off because we're going to make this ladder slightly slanted. So it's slowly going to get bigger as it goes down. And I measured off my third wood strip. So not the like size of the ladder at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And I cut the pieces down and you can see it's like slightly slanted. You can barely see it. Like you can barely tell, I mean. And then I just continue doing that with all my strips. When you are done, you can put your pieces together and you can see it like slowly gets larger. Now here's where it got a little tricky for me because this is my first time doing it. Totally a learning experience for me. I'm not even gonna lie and say this was easy. Um, yeah, it definitely took a second for me to understand how I wanted to do this and, and kind of get, I, it was really frustrating at first because I kept on knocking the pieces off as I was trying to hammer them in. So let me back up. Let me say what I did and let me say what I wish I would have done. So what I originally did was start at the top, measured down, 11 inches marked off where I wanted my little rungs to go added the wood glue took a nail and then nailed it in and you can see me struggling because I'm like trying to use my feet to hold one side of the ladder when I'm nailing as I go I don't have a nail gun what I really wish I would have done is just used wood glue and not even worry about nailing this at first because wood glue is sturdy enough where it would hold it by itself. Now the next morning, I mean, I used a boatload of wood glue on this too, and I had to move it around a million times. So I think if I do this again, it would definitely be easier. And I hope I'm not rambling now. So let me back up. If you do this, I would suggest you just using wood glue and laying it out and letting it dry overnight, then go back and add a nails. I ended up adding two nails to each rung just to make it extra sturdy. Then because I had a boatload of wood glue, you can even see all the little yellow areas. That's how much wood glue I used. And I went back and just sanded down the ladder to make it as smooth as possible. Now I kind of ruined any chance I had with staining this because of all the wood glue I used, which is totally fine, that's okay. So I took this in a different direction. I decided just to use some spray paint. And I thought black spray paint would probably look the best. I think white would look good too, but I wanted to go for black. So this is Rust-Oleum's black spray paint, what I had on hand, and I just gave it one good coat. That's why I love Rust-Oleum because really you only need like one coat. If you are using Walmart's 97 cent spray paint, you would probably need about five coats. <laughs> that stuff is like watered down super thin. And once it was done, after all my struggles, I'm very proud of this ladder. I love, love, love the way it turned out. I think this is great for indoor or outdoor use. Definitely using it indoors and I'm really gonna use it for my bathroom for towels Actually my kids bathroom for towels toilet paper get some baskets to hang on there Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time my friend